I'm working with uh, uh, vector-borne diseases. Uh, I'm interested in the mosquito-transmitted diseases, malaria and dengue fever, and uh, exploring genetic ways to uh, interrupt the transmission of the insects. And there's two major areas. One of them is population suppression, which is a genetic analog for um, uh, insecticide. So the idea is to reduce the number of insects and therefore reduce the risk of, trans uh, of infection and transmission. And the other one is an area called population replacement or modification, which changes the genetic ability of the insect to transmit the pathogen. And the idea here is that one leaves the insect in place, but the actual target is the pathogen. And there's some advantages to the population replacement modification strategies that involve uh, uh, the ability to leave something in place um, that, that uh, won't be reinvaded by, by the insect if you, if you um, uh, remove it, eliminate it from the area. So that's the, the sort of general area that I work on. I was trained in genetics, and um, when I had the opportunity to apply uh, my training to a significant problem, the question came up, does genetics have anything to offer to control transmission of vector-borne diseases? And that's the kind of question that you ask when you, you think you already have the answer, which is, you know, yes. And so what we've attempted to do is see if we can develop genetic technologies in a way that would allow us to um, uh, prevent transmission and contribute to the, the complexity of fields that are, involved, that are being applied to, to malaria. So you can think about uh, immunology, people developing vaccines, understanding disease progression. You can think about chemistry, the development of insecticides and therapeutic drugs. And so the question is, does a, a major discipline like genetics have anything to add to the, to the picture? And so we're trying to, trying to develop that area. The basic approach is, is based on um, uh, the, the biology of the parasites and the insects. And, and that is that there are a lot of blood uh, feeding insects, they're called hematophagous insects, uh, and there are a lot of blood-borne pathogens. And what you see is that not everything that feeds on blood transmits everything that's in blood. And what you find are very uh, high degrees of host specificity of these pathogens for their, their, their vectors. And um, that's heritable, so there's a genetic property to that. And so the question is, in general, um, uh, can we turn something that normally would transmit into something that would not transmit, because we know that there are lots of things that feed on blood that don't transmit. And uh, one of the ways of getting at this, of course, is to understand the biology of how um, uh, some vectors are susceptible and some are resistant. But with molecular biological tools, we could circumvent that. And in our approach um, is to just build genes. And so while we're very much interested in the biology, the, the tools of molecular biology and molecular genetics have allowed us to just make synthetic genes that would confer properties that we want. And so we can take an applied approach, imagine what that gene would look like, and then see if we can get the, we can construct the various components that would allow us to build a gene that would give us a desired phenotype. So that's our, that's the, the uh, sort of overall schematic of the approach. And um, as uh, I talk about in the work that we do, we then make a very basic model of a gene. And we talk about a gene having a control region and an effector region. And the control region tells you when and where and how much of something to make, and the effector region actually does the job. And since we get to choose what we want, uh, common sense design principles like, well, whatever you're gonna make that would interfere with the pathogen, why not put it in the pathogen at the time and place in the mosquito where the pathogens are? So we look for genes that are expressed in mosquitoes uh, in significant tissues where the parasites are going to be and then use those control sequences to drive the expression of the effector molecules. And then use transgenesis technologies to um, put the genes into the mosquitoes and test them. And then from there, uh, working on technologies for spreading those genes through populations. So those are the sort of major step steps that we're working on.